Good morning, everybody. Welcome home. Yes, let's give the Lord a clap. to be together. We've been looking forward to this, haven't we? Yeah. Yes, we have. And I'm sure behind every mask and visor, there must be a smile. Is that right? Yeah. You're smiling with your eyes, aren't you? I can tell. Okay, that is great. We just want to welcome folks who are listening online as well. God bless you. It's good to have you with us. And one day, we shall be together forever. Well, we shall be together <laughs> here. And we will, and we'll enjoy everyone's fellowship together. That will be really, really good. Okay, uh, just a few announcements we have to make. We're grateful to uh, all our team for seeking to make St. Paul's uh, uh, COVID safe. We thank you. Uh, important that we follow government guidelines. Uh, it's also important that we observe social distancing uh, at all times. And uh, please, as uh, anti-vac, did that as you came in, and if you hand it back on your way out, that would be great. And uh, on leaving, we have to uh, exit just one row at a time, okay? Our steward, April, give us a wave, April, that is good. Uh, April will supervise us on our way out, okay? And on your way out, there is an offering box there for you, uh, okay? But if you would like to give online, uh, uh, bank's order and all that, that would be uh, far more convenient for us. That would be great. Uh, the children and youth are at the back there, and they'll be brought in uh, uh, during our final song uh, today. Okay, so uh, Dot is speaking to us this morning. Maggie is going to bring a reading. Phil and John are leading worship, so that is good. Bless the Lord. Shall we stand together? That's good. We're going to pray in a moment. Hallelujah. Just thinking earlier this week, you know, that... Um, our minds have been so caught up and almost centered on things relating to the pandemic. Is that right? And you know, we've been thinking about it most days actually. But you know, um, today, we need to refocus our minds. We want God to speak into our hearts this morning, into our lives this morning, because we want to refocus on Jesus. Are we going to do that? Just refocus on Jesus. We want to re really begin to bring our life back. Maybe to rediscover what it is to have a, a greater relationship with the Lord Jesus. Because He is going to bring us peace. Okay? He is our peace. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, He said. But you know, a gift we give you. But it has to be accepted, doesn't it? Today, just allow God. Let's allow God just to speak into our lives the peace uh, that Jesus brings. Was it Nehemiah told the Jewish people, he said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Okay? The joy of the Lord is your strength. If you've, if during this pandemic your joy has gone down, let's rediscover it because that's what's going to strengthen us. Amen? Amen. Let's pray, shall we? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us. Every day. We thank you for your unfailing love. We thank you for your fellowship with us. Today, we thank you that we can come together and share that fellowship together with you. We thank you. Thank you for sustaining us. We pray for those in our fellowship who are struggling in the midst of this pandemic. We pray today that you will strengthen, that you will sustain, that you will minister to them in a special way, we pray. Just pray for our government, heads of industry, our care workers. Lord, we pray for wisdom and guidance in every way. Sustain them and strengthen them in Jesus' name as they lead us. Just pray for ourselves today, O oh God. Wherever we may be in this church, in our front room, Father, just minister to each and every one. Each one of us has special needs. We ask that you will come, touch every life and minister to us. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
bless you. You may remain standing as Phil and John lead us in worship, or you may want to sit, that's absolutely fine. If you want to wave your hands in the air, that is absolutely amazing. But if this is going to be hard, it's going to be hard not to sit. Okay? Do your best. We need to do that. Okay, God bless you. You can't sing. You can't sing. You can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> I realise that. I realize that. Uh, the great thing is we can sing in our hearts, can't we? So let's let's lift up the name of the Lord in our hearts as we worship together.
Thank you for your yes, Good. Oh, do you know, I'm really jealous of Phil. Yeah. He can sing and we can't. Did you find that hard? Yeah. You can not, you can not. Okay, yes, we did, did we? We really. Roy Smallwood did, I tell you that in our first service this morning. Wow, he's a real singer. Okay, that's great. Maggie, come and read to us. Oh, that was just good. And um, after Maggie is read, Phil's going to lead us in another song before Doc brings us a message this morning. reading from uh, the NIV and it's John 21 verse 1 to 14. Jesus and the miraculous catch of fish. Afterwards Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the sea of Tiberias. It's happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals. There were fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead.
But my question for you this morning is, do you believe it? Yes. Do you believe it? Do you believe God is good all the time? Do you believe that he will do what he has promised? But not only believe it, do you walk in it? Does it become part of our everyday life and thinking and, um, and pushing forward? Um, I asked some of the team this week when I was down here um, what their favourite promises were. And the two big ones that everybody said came out first. Uh, Joshua 1 5, I will never leave you or forsake you. And then Jeremiah 29 11, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Now that's a really, really interesting promise because if you put it into context and if you read what was going on at the time, it was a mess. And the people of God were living in, in a place they did not want to be. They were living in the land of not okay. And God says to them, I have plans to prosper you and to, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future, but you've got to stay where you are for 70 years. It wasn't an immediate deliverance from where they were. And actually, when we look at that and we realise that the people were living in the land of not okay, but God was there. Right back at the beginning of um, lockdown, I, I um, was... I don't know why I was leading it, but we were having a meeting in the low thing. It must have been just before we went into immediate lockdown. And, and as leaders, we were talking about the way forward for church and, and things like that. And I felt that God it was just saying to me, wait, wait, wait. And Psalm 27 says, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Whether he was talking to us as a group, he was definitely talking to me as a, as a person. And just a couple of weeks ago, I read that particular verse um, in the Passion Translation. And it should come up on your screen here now. And this sums up so far lockdown for me. Here's what I've learned through it all. Don't give up. Don't be impatient. That's me. Don't be impatient. Be entwined as one with the Lord. Be brave and courageous, never lose hope. Yes, keep on waiting, for he will never disappoint you. And I just love that line, being trying as one with the Lord, because I just felt, for me, and I will share why, that that is what God has been saying to me. I haven't had millions of pictures and read loads of books and all that, but just God saying, come and be with me. Back in February, before lockdown, we employed a builder to come and uh, convert our garage because a few years before we'd had to move from a much bigger house than what we're in now and there was stuff everywhere and we needed more space. And, but in order to do that, of course, we had to clear the garage out. So at the beginning of lockdown, our conservatory was full of stuff, my hallway was full of stuff, my landing was full of stuff, the spare bedroom was full of stuff, and I'm going, <gasps> I can't breathe, it's just coming in on top of me and of course we went into lockdown so my head was I can't stay in this box I've got to be out doing things and lo and behold then straight pretty much pretty quickly I was furloughed now can I just say that your employer can't furlough you without you agreeing to it so the trustees didn't just ring me up and say you are being furloughed tough luck there was a conversation and it was agreed and I went on to furlough but for me I'd lost, I felt like I'd lost everything. I'd lost my job, I'd lost my purpose. My house was, I, I felt crushed in it. And um, I was listening to a talk by a guy just one day when I was trying to speak to do painting the landing. There was one, yes, I was one of those that painted the whole house. And um, uh, Steve Furtick from Elevation Church um, over the water, he was reading from Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. And this is the prophetic announcement of Jesus coming and there's this wonderful couple of lines and you'll know it he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace and i looked at the sky and i went you're having a joke aren't you i'm sat here this you know i'm living in netflix because have you seen those films contagion and all that all these films about pandemics and, and, and we're suddenly living in it I'm living in my house is a mess. I've got a builder who I've got this funny feeling isn't going to come back again. He's 
we've got our money, he's going to spend it all through lockdown, all this stuff is going through my mind. And, and um, this guy was saying that God is a prince of peace, but he is not a prince, listen to this, he is not a prince of convenience, he's not a prince of ease or comfort, he's not the prince of when things are going good. So often we associate peace with convenience, don't we? What I want to happen, my preferences being met, it's all sorted. I, you know, if everything's sorted, if, if the building was sorted, if this was sorted, then I'd know the Lord's peace. Then I'd know the Lord's peace. But Jesus didn't say that, did he? John 14, 27, he says, Peace I leave with you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Peace in your head is not the peace I'm talking about here. Philippians 4, it transcends all understanding. It's so much deeper than what I think is going on. It's peace that powers through in the middle of circumstance. If you, you think about that prophet, prophecy um, of Jesus being born and, and it comes to the time when Jesus was born and who the first people were that this was announced to, shepherds on a hillside, almighty presence of God, angels, light, we're told. It must have been the most awesome time. And we all like to think that when we're in the awesome presence of God, it's going to be amazing. But the shepherds, we're told, were frightened. They were full of fear. We dissociate God's presence with everything being okay. But actually, those shepherds were in the land of not okay. They were in the land of the completely unexpected. They were in the land of I don't know what's going on, and they were faced with a massive choice. They were faced with a massive choice. They needed to renegotiate their thinking. What am I going to do? Am I going to believe what this, what, what's going on, or am I going to cut my losses and run? Because I, 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 I don't understand this. I don't get it. It's, it's, you know. All over our TV screens in the last 18 months, two years or so, and it's, it's to do with mental health, um, but there's this big phrase, it's okay to not be okay. I agree with it. But I want to add something to that, which I think is really, really important for us uh, as Christians. It's okay to not be okay, but what you do with the not okay is really, really, really important. Really important. You see, the shepherds, they pushed through their fear. They waited around long enough to realise that what the angels were saying might actually be true. And they started to believe with their heads in their heart and then their feet. And they went down to Bethlehem. And they had the amazing experience of kneeling. Can you imagine? I'm a shepherd, I'm an outcast, I stink. I am kneeling at the bedside of the Son of God. Did they understand it? No. Were they expecting it? No. Did they ask for it? No. Did God have a plan for them? Yes. Was God's plan awesome? Yes. Was it better than anything they could have dreamt of? Yes. But it was all through this gateway of fear and choice. But was our story all about the shepherds and angels? No, it wasn't all about the shepherds and angels. It was about Jesus. And we so often miss the point of the story. We so often miss the point of the story. Without Jesus, there would have been no story. There would have been no story. He's the king of kings being born as a baby, coming to save us. That was a story. Packaged so bizarrely, unmarried mother, dirty stable, who? Smelly animals, stinky shepherds. We look for the pretty, the comfortable. We look for the got it all together, the makes sense, and I like how I feel. We cry out for peace, but what we're actually crying out for is for everything to be sorted. I want to talk about two disciples of Jesus at the time of his death. You know, these were two people who had walked for three years in close contact with him. They'd seen the miracles. They'd heard his teaching. They'd been around him. There were two, and at the time of Jesus' death, all the disciples were in the land of not okay. It was a horrendous time. I can't imagine what it would have been like. What about Mary, his mother? Not okay. But there were two disciples who were big time in the land of not okay. One was Judas and one was Peter. 
And they were stood at this doorway of decision. One, because he betrayed Jesus, the other because he denied him. And one decided to run. It led to death. One decided to turn, to repent, and to come back into the presence of Jesus. And Peter then went on to do amazing things. But what I'm trying to say here is they had that moment, big time not okay, and I have to choose. What I believe about who God is will determine how I live. Do I believe he is good all the time? Do I believe he will fulfill his promise? Now I'm surrounded with a wonderful team of highly super spiritual people who are amazing and they put all this stuff on WhatsApp and they read all these books and there was all this stuff coming down the leadership WhatsApp and I was in this place of, and I'm going to shut you off because I'm in the place not okay. All right. I'm in the place not okay. And I was not reading lots of books. I was even struggling to actually have my quiet times. I was, just because I was just in this place. Now, that doesn't mean I was walking away from God. I wasn't. And I was listening to stuff and, and all this kind of thing. But I did pick up one book. Um, and this book, Faith in the Fog, by a guy called Jeff Lou, because he suffers actually from depression. He's a pastor. And it's all based on that wonderful story that Maggie read so well for us. It's all based on that story of the disciples out in the middle of the night trying to catch fish. And they'd been out there all night, all night, professional men. Jesus had just risen from the dead. Everything was chaotic. So maybe they just went back to earn some pennies for their family or whether they just went back to where they felt safe and secure, I don't know. But there they were. And they hadn't caught anything. And this guy comes along on the beach and says, Three men on the other side. You'll catch more. <laughs> Choice moment. It's not okay. I've been out all night fishing. I am a professional fisherman. Do you really think that if I move my net from this side of the boat to that side of the boat, I am actually going to catch more fish? I know they could have taken that attitude, couldn't they? So easily. But they didn't. They threw the net over and the miracle happened. But is the story about the miracle? Come with me to the beach. See it through the lens of Jesus. You see, without Jesus, there was no miracle. The story is about Jesus. And what I love about this wonderful, wonderful story, in verse 13, it says, Jesus came close to them and served them with fish and bread. Now, this was a guy, Jesus, had just risen from the dead. He had just done the most incredible thing. Did he seek celebrity status? No. He stood on the beach and said to the disciples, come, sit with me around the fire and I am going to meet your need. Your need is to eat. It's a practical, pretty human necessity. And I just looked that and I felt God was saying to me, come, sit, just sit, the beach with the fire. By this stage in lockdown, some of the restrictions had lifted and builders were allowed back to work, but our builder decided, no, I'm not coming, I'm going to keep the money. So I've got all this stuff going on in my head, and June, June 19th, while negotiating Sainsbury's with my husband, if you've ever been shopping with John in Sainsbury's, you will know that it's a very interesting experience. But you know, Sainsbury's have introduced this little app where you scan all your food and then you can, you do, it's really, really good and it's even better if you've got a husband who, when he comes shopping, sneaks things into the trolley because he can't do it anymore. Because <laughs> I know, it has to be scanned. <laughs> but we were in Sainsbury's this Friday evening and my phone rang and it was my brother, my brother never rings. And uh, he just said, mum's been blue lighted to hospital it looks like she's having a heart attack. You could have absolutely knocked me over because there was no sign of illness, there was nothing to indicate that she would ever have a heart attack. She went on, had a stent, and, and we all thought, she'd be home, that's what happens, people have heart attacks. That isn't what happened. And uh, 12 days later, she passed away. And, I have to say, I was like one of those 
little cartoon characters. When I was a young child, it would have been Br'er Rabbit running along, and then he's run over by a ten-ton truck, and he's sat in the middle of the road with little stars, you know, over his head. That's how I felt. I was completely dazed, shocked, blank, couldn't string two thoughts together. I couldn't cook meals. I just, I was blank. Now, I wasn't saying, where is God in all this? I knew he was there. But I was blank. I was lost. And God reminded me. I'm sorry, Tim, we need to go on to the picture. I've forgotten the, the other two lines. Um, of a picture that I actually used a few weeks ago in lockdown when we were speaking on the 23rd Psalm. And God just said to me, God, let me carry you. Let me carry you. You do not have to do anything in this season of not okay. And I felt God saying, just stop, wait. Allow me to do what I want to do. The shepherds that came their experience of God came out of the blue. They were frightened, but they had to choose. The fishermen were in the right place, but they were doing things the wrong way. What would have happened if they'd have made the wrong decision? I had the privilege of sitting with my mum for the last four hours of her life. It was um, quite traumatic, I have to say. And I remember just saying, Lord, just release her, release her, release her. This, this, this awful breathing, this awful stuff is just not of you, release her. And I felt God say to me, you release her. And there's a lot of stuff that has gone on in our family. Um, my mum loves the Lord, absolutely loved the Lord. But there were other things around the family. And, and I had to let go of some of the, the things that had happened. I had to release her in order to be released myself. Does that make sense? And when she took her last three breaths, they were quite noisy, and then it was silent. It was so silent, I just said to him, have you gone? I didn't know what else to do. But can I just say to you, I was in the land of big not okay. We were in lockdown, I felt like I lost my job. My mum had just died, we got someone who'd gone off with a load of our money. I was in the land of big not okay, but I tell you, in that place, in that moment, the peace of God was so tangible. Because peace is not about our circumstances. Peace is about making the right decisions, believing the right things. It's about training our hearts and our minds to walk out the kingdom of God wherever we are, whatever's going on. You know, we can be so locked down spiritually when Jesus wants to say, I want to free you up. I don't want you living in lockdown. I want you freed up. There's um, some amazing um, film footage of, I think it's World War I soldiers, and there's probably lots of these things around. After victory has been declared across the world, and they're, they're marching home, some, some of the films I've seen, they're singing, and, and the camera homes in and they're smiling. But if you look at them, they've lost limbs, they've got bandages around their heads, they haven't washed for weeks, they probably haven't eaten properly for weeks. They bear the marks of war, yet they are walking in victory. Have you got that? That's really quite profound. They bear the marks of warfare, yet they march in victory. And that is us, this side of heaven, that's where we're going to be. We are going to bear the marks of warfare. We do not live in a perfect world. And when we're marching for Jesus, the enemy is going to pump. He's going to have a go. But guys, don't choose to do the Judas. Don't choose to run. Don't choose to hide in the bedclothes. Choose to do what Peter did and to face Jesus and to say, God, God, I need your peace in the middle. I thank God for the way he has carried me over the last few months. Am I out of the land of not okay? No, I am not. I'm still in the land of not okay. But God 
has sustained us. He's found a way out for us, for the, the building, the garage, that's, and it's going to be so much better than it's ever going to be. God always knows what's coming. Tim, could you just put that slide on that I missed for me, please? This is something else that was said in that talk I was talking about right at the beginning. It's impossible to experience peace when expecting perfection. To experience peace, you must surrender your expectation. I want to walk with Jesus. I want to march with Jesus. No matter what's going on, we're going to do a song. This song has been my battle cry all the way through lockdown. Um, and in particular, when, we were, when I was driving down the first time, my, my mother lives three hours from us. So it, it, it was a massive thing. And I was driving down the motorway and I put this song on repeat. And I just kept singing it and singing it and singing it. Because they, I didn't want to go down to what was happening down there. I wanted to be there for my mum. But there were people down there I couldn't see. And I knew I was going to sing it. <laughs> I, you know, and I just, every step of the way, we need to see things. We need to stand on the beach and we need to see things through the eyes of Jesus. And we need to declare Jesus into all those things that would seek to tear us away. Let's not be a people of living in lockdown spiritually. Let's be a people who are freed up. You know, when the church is released, God doesn't want us in A&E. &E. He needs us marching in our victory march. And we've got, it's a choice. It's about us choosing to believe that God is good all the time. That he will do what he said he will do. And when we're living in the land of not again, we can trust him. Because he is God. Because he's Jesus. Would you like to stand? Thank you, Lord. Just close your eyes for us. Thank you, Jesus. to contemplate how God has spoken to, to us this morning. God has spoken to you as an individual, as to where you're at. <clears throat> Maybe you're not in the land that all's okay. Maybe you're in that land. Just allow the Lord to minister into your life. Just apply that word that God has spoken this morning into your life. Thank you, Jesus. Father, minister to us. Should our closing song just now? Minister into our lives. We shall realize what you would have us do. Father, strengthen, sustain, minister, that we shall feel the substance of your presence in our lives, our heart. As we go from this place, different people than when we came in, because you have spoken and ministered into our lives. Thank you, Jesus. like to remain standing, that's fine. If you feel more, more comfortable, sat down as God sings our closing song to us. That is good. God bless you all. Amen.
Let's remain standing, shall we? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for ministering into our lives today. Thank you for ministering into our needs. Father, help us to put Jesus at the center of our life. Our minds have been taken up with other things these last months. Today we refocus our lives. Today we refocus our minds. As we go from this place, different because you have spoken to us. Thank you, Jesus. Let me just read you this blessing as we go this morning. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit within you. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a clap off for each other. for joining us. We trust we shall see you maybe next week. Okay, may God bless you too in a special way. Amen. Amen. Okay.